Today we're talking about printf and its many different varieties. Welcome back everybody, it's been a minute, thanks for being here. Today we're going back to the basics and talking about printf. Probably one of the first functions you ever called when learning to program in C. Yep, all the way back to Hello World, you remember that program. But while you may be familiar with printf, you may not be familiar with a lot of its variants. Printf is a family. There are a lot of different variations on printf and a lot of new programmers are not familiar with many of them. I mean. Sometimes it feels like you could just stick a bunch of random letters in front of printf, and regardless of what you put there, you probably end up with a valid function to call. Like we've got fprintf, we've got sprintf, we've got wprintf, and vfxprintf. That last one's not real, but it would probably look pretty cool if it was. Anyway, today I thought we would take a tour through the many different printf varieties. We'll get the most common ones, I'm sure there's a few we'll leave out, but let's jump into the code. Okay, so today we're gonna start with a really simple program here, just a main. I also have a make file over here, which is gonna compile my example. Check out my previous make videos if you are unfamiliar with make, make files, all that stuff. But what we're gonna do, let's just start out with the printf that we're all familiar with. And so let's just print something out. We'll printf something. Uh, I think today, rather than, we could just print out just a static string, but printf is good at formatting stuff. So let's, let's print out some variables. So let's say like an integer, and let's print out the address where that integer is located. So percent %p and a new line. And then we'll need some variable, we'll call it x. I haven't declared it yet, but we'll do that and the address of x. So, and then let's come up here and say x equals 42. Because why not? Okay, so this is not a video about format specifiers like this percent %d, percent %p. Let me know down in the comments if you would like a deep dive into those. Uh, there are a lot of different ways that you can specify variables that you want to substitute into your string, but printf generally has this, you've got this format string, and then you have basically, depending on the format specifiers that we have in the format string, you have matching variables that show up as arguments. This function is variadic, meaning it takes a variable number of arguments, and I have another video that talks about variadic functions. If you want more information about that, go check out that video. I'll link down in the description. But for today, this is a good, straightforward starting place. If, let's save it. If you come down here, just make sure that everything's working. We can just say example, and you can see it prints out 42 and the address of our local variable, which is somewhere on the stack. So, so far, pretty straightforward. Next thing, let's see what would happen if we wanted, instead of printing out to standard out, so this just by default dumps this output to the standard out pipe, which shows up in my terminal. But what if I wanted to write this somewhere else? What if I wanna say, I don't want you to write this to standard out, I wanna write it to a file or a pipe or something file-like. So print to somewhere else, maybe a file, file or, file like thing. Okay, so for this, we have one of two options. We could either use uh, fprintf, so that's file printf. Now for that, we're that's going to take an additional argument up front, which is going to be a file pointer. In this case, let's just say I wanted to write it to standard error. I could just do this, and what that's saying is just do the normal printf stuff, but we're redirecting it, we want it to go to this file pointer, this standard error. Okay, now there is another one I wanna show you, and that is dprintf, and that is if rather than a file stream, a pointer to a file stream, instead, if you have a file descriptor, which is just an int, then you can do that. And so um, let's just say we still want it to go to standard error, but let's just use the file no function to get the file descriptor from the file stream. If you're confused about the difference between those two, I have another video I'll link down in the description that will talk about the differences between you know, file pointers, like we get from fopen or something like that, and a file descriptor which we would get from something like a call to open. And then let's come down here and let's put an, I'm gonna put an F at the front of this string and I'm gonna put a D at the front of this string so that you can tell which is which. And of course these functions, I'm using it with standard error because it was something that was already open that I had handy, but let's say that we wanted to write to an actual file. We could take both of these and instead, like I could just say file pointer, file and then call f open. Like I mentioned before, we could call this output.txt and let's open it for writing. And then we can just change this to file. Notice that in a real program, you do some error checking. I'm just going to not do any error checking and just assume that everything works. 
And then we can also say like if I if I want a file descriptor, let's call it file desk. And then we're gonna call open and here we'll call this one output 2.txt just so that we can keep these two things separate. And then we will have o write only and I want o create. Okay, so what this is gonna say is we're opening it for writing. It's basically the same thing we did up above, only instead of one of these file pointer, pointer to a file stream thing that we're gonna get, instead it just gives us an integer, which is gonna be a file descriptor, which is the way that the kernel is going to refer to these open files. So we can do that and then change this to file desk. Okay, and then just because it's probably good form, let's close these two files. And so now let's just, this is a good time maybe to just recompile, make sure I didn't, uh, looks like I missed something. We need to come up here and add a header file. Okay, now we're good. So if we run it, you can see sure enough, we not only do we get our prints happening to standard error, but if we come up here to output and output two, you can see that we also get prints there. Okay, so that's fprintf and dprintf. What if I instead wanted to, let's say instead of a file, let's say that I wanted to print to a string. You know, I want to do this whole formatted output thing. I want to be able to format my variables in different ways, but I want the output to end up in a string. Okay, well here, uh, let's start with sprintf. So sprintf is going to look a lot like fprintf, except rather than a file here, we're going to provide a string or a buffer, some, some array of characters where we're going to put something. So let's just call this buff and let's change that to s. And now we're going to need a to declare buff and we'll call that, this is like buffer size, so we'll give it some size. And let's come up here and pound define this to, let's say 1024, um, but it's arbitrary, but this is going to limit how much I can put in here. You wanna make sure that it's big enough to hold whatever might possibly get put in. Now it's important to note that sprintf is often considered by many people, including myself, to be problematic because there is no way to check for length. You know, what if my output ends up being longer than my buffer. In this case, we set the buffer really big, so that's not gonna happen, but what if I don't know the size of the variables? What if I'm printing out little strings in here, things like that, that could be very long? I don't know how much space I need, and so nothing is gonna prevent my output from overrunning the end of my buffer, which can create buffer overrun attacks, security problems, um, and just memory corruption and annoying stuff. So if you're using sprintf, the burden of making sure that everything fits within your buffer is really on you, whoever's calling it, and that can lead to annoying security vulnerabilities. So instead, if we don't like this, we can also make another version called snprintf, and this is going to take another argument, and that's gonna be this buffer size. Okay, so we basically can tell it, hey, this the n just means number of bytes. And so we're going to say, here's my buffer that I want you to print to. Here's the size of it. So it'll make sure that it doesn't go over there. If you try to put too much into it, it's just going to cut it off. And so that's usually going to provide a safer option. Um, let's just so that we can see what's going on. Let's just add another printf. Printf's everywhere. Uh, we're just going to say buff equals percent s and we will print our buff. But let's go one step further because maybe I want to use something like sprintf but I don't want to worry about the length at all. Like I don't want to specify it. I don't want to think about it. I just want to automatically have enough memory for whatever I'm printing and for that we are going to use another variety called asprintf and let's just, it's going to look a lot like sprintf. So the a stands for allocate and let's make a separate buffer. We're gonna say, this is gonna be buff two, and we are gonna pass in the address. Now the address is important here. We're passing a pointer to a character pointer, because what is gonna happen here is that asprintf is going to look at what it's about to print out, and it is going to allocate space, and it's gonna return that through this buff pointer. So when we're done, buff two is going to point to a buffer that is guaranteed to be big enough to hold the stuff we print here in, in asprintf. So here, we don't have to really worry about, let's put buff two here, let's print this out. We don't really have to worry about the length. We do have to remember then to free buff two once we are done with it though. So after I'm done, and printing it out, I'm gonna free it because this is getting allocated on the heap. So if that's what you wanna do, it's a common pattern, right? You wanna have space allocated on the heap for this 
string that you're printing into. If that's what you want, then ASPrintf can be really convenient. Just make sure to free the pointer that's returned back to you when you're done. Because if you don't, you could have a problematic memory leak. Okay, so these are the most common variants that I use. You can also take any of these, and each of these variants, you can just add a V before it. So things like VPrintf, VSPrintf, VASPrintf, VFPrintf, and the V variants are used if I say something like v printf, these are going to be used with variable argument functions or variadic functions. I mentioned that I talked about those in a previous video, but let me show you really quick how that might work. This is most often useful when I want to write a function that is going to, it's like my own function, but I want it to behave in a printf-like way. Okay, so what do we can do? Let's come up here and let's just say that I want to make a function that is like printf, but I'm going to call it my printf, and it's going to behave like printf, but be slightly different. Okay, so let's say that I want it to take in a const character pointer format string, and then it's going to be variadic. So it's going to take a variable number of arguments after that format string. And so this looks just like printf. Maybe let's mix it up just a little bit and say I want to have some kind of prefix here. So let's just say we want a const character pointer prefix that's going to go at the beginning of all of our output. So like I said, it's like printf, but I'm customizing it in my own way. So because it's variadic, we're going to make a variable argument list. I'll call it args, and we'll call va start. Again, check out my variadic function um, example for more details about what this all is. But so we're basically saying I want my variable arguments. They're going to start after format. So basically, you got format, and then you've got the dots. You're also going to need va end. And then there's a the question of, well, what are we going to do with this? Well, it's going to return an int like printf returns. So and so let's say this is going to be um, int, call it result, and we'll assign it to vprintf. And we'll pass in our format string, and we'll pass in our args. So this behaves just like printf, but I'm going to also add a printf at the beginning and have this be like this, where we'll print the prefix. So this is going to first print the prefix, and then it's going to call vprintf, right? So which is just like printf, except for rather than being a variadic function, it takes this va list argument, um, which is convenient because we don't have a name otherwise where we can just specify these arguments that are, you know, this variable list of arguments. So this just passes the whole list into vprintf, and so it's going to do that. And then we can just return result. And now with this, so this becomes my own printf like function. It's using this printf variant that just is very, you know, takes variable arguments as a particular like a vector of args. And so now we can come down here and say something like, actually, no, I want to let's use our first one so that we keep the formatting similar. But so say that I do my printf here, we're just going to add ourselves a little prefix there. So now if we come in here, oops, looks like I've got a couple of issues. Oh, forgot to make this buff too. Sorry about that. And I forgot, I made that whole new my printf and I forgot to call, actually call the right function. Sorry about that. Okay, so now we are good to go. Okay, so now you can see, sure enough, the my printf prints out the prefix, but otherwise is behaving exactly like printf should. And like I said, you can do this. I did this with, I showed how you use vprintf, but if you wanted this to go to a file, you could use vfprintf, you could use vsprintf if you want to go to a string. Okay, now another one I'm going to mention here at the end, but I think it deserves its own video, is wprintf. That's a printf variant that uh, is going to involve wide characters, and so that gets us into Unicode and multibyte characters, and like I said, that, that really is going to need a little more explanation, probably needs its own video, maybe two. But these are the printf variants that I use use most often. Let me know down in the comments if I missed any, especially if there's one that you just love so much. Thanks to all of you for your help supporting this channel, and I will see you in the next one.